Hi everyone, welcome to Contact Vision Talks. Does the term piano accompanist ring a bell? As a violinist, I can say, where would I be without a piano accompanist? It is my greatest pleasure today to welcome my very, very dear friend, pianist and musicologist Urania Menelal. Having studied in Prague, London, and at the University of Iowa, Rania specialized in piano accompaniment and is today a well sought out piano accompanist and lecturer. I've known Urania for many years. We've studied together, played together. Recently, Urania kindly accepted to be the music expert in our Conduct Vision online course, How to Orchestrate Your Business, sharing her unique experiences and perspectives on communication, collaboration, and performance. Looking to introduce and offer you a glimpse into the world of a piano accompanist, I asked Urania to join me and share her story. Urania, what does an accompanist actually do? Well, an accompanist is doing what the word says, to accompany. It means to go along with somebody, to keep company to somebody. And of course, uh, when you accompany somebody, it's like uh, not only to be friends, to follow, to assist, to support, and the same in music. Um, you are playing with somebody or you play for somebody. And the accompanist is doing three things. He's, he or her is interacting with a fellow musician. Um, he's communicating with the other musician and he's supporting. So those are the three things that the accompanist can do. When I say he's interacting, it means that um, two people two, like with different character they are coming together to create one piece because the melody that the solist is playing, let's say, and the accompany that the accompanist has to play is one piece. It's not two different things. So the interaction is that um, the solist knows his part. The accompany knows even if he has to play three chords, it's very important how he will understand and play these three chords to the melody of the solis. Those two, they have to communicate. They have to exchange ideas. How to bring to life this piece that somebody else has composed, like maybe hundreds of years ago. Yes, so uh, they have to communicate, to exchange ideas, and to create in a common ground something new, or to recreate the idea of the composer. Then the accompanist has to support the solis. Yes, it has to help him create the ideas that the solis bring into the music. Yes, for example, um, if he's playing um, like a beautiful melody by Tchaikovsky, let's say, and I have in one place just um, tsa, tsa, um, tsa, like three chords of a waltz or something. Yes, it's very important how I will support the melody of the solis and how I'm going to bring into the music these three chords, this um tsa tsa. It's, it's very important, the role of the accompanist in this teamwork. So um, the accompanist um, is not only listening, is understanding the solis, following, yes, but also it's a huge support. Yes. There are many times that um, if you have a poor companies and not so good a companies, that your whole performance can go wrong. But if you have a good a companies that is interacting with you, is communicating with you and supporting you, then your performance can be even better. So, um, but of course, it depends um, what kind of music you play and with whom. Yeah? Because there are pieces that you are just a company. But there are chamber music pieces, for example, if you pay, play a sonata with somebody or a duo, then it's not only that you are accompanying somebody. There you're also um, a pianist accompanying. It means that your role is equally important with that of your partner, of the solist, let's say. Yes. In the chamber music, um, 
the role of our companies is more of a collaborator. And actually, this is a term that is now being used. I mean, in, in the States, they don't say you are companies. They say you are a plan or collaborator. You are collaborating. Yeah, so you are working with somebody. You are equally important. So that's the, how the role is changing. Yeah, that's a in very interesting shift from a companist to a collaborator. You mentioned support. Would you consider that as the key quality of a, a companist? Um, it is a key quality, uh, but in order to be able to support somebody, I believe you have to be very sensitive. So I think sensitivity, or maybe I should say better, a sixth sense or empathy mm -hmm. <laughs> is what is important for their companies. because. It's not only that you are listening to your partner, how it's playing, but you have to anticipate what it can go wrong. I mean, you have to be ready to, I mean, for example, um, your partner is played by memory, yes? But you as an accompanist, you have the music in front of you. So in case that the soloist forget the whole page and he jumps to another page, you have to be ready to jump also. So you have to be alert to what's happening during performance, yes? But also in the same moment, you have to be calm so that nobody will know, oh, oh something is happening, yes? And then you have to jump ahead to find where your partner it is at the certain moment. I mean, there are hundreds of stories. I mean, what, what's happening in, in the moment of the performance? You have to be ready to do anything. And this is where your support comes in. So you have to be sensitive and flexible to adapt to the changes that the other person brings into the piece or into the moment of the performance. I mean, many things you can rehearse, but there's always something happening, a moment of surprise during the concert and you have to be ready. Yeah, there's always the unexpected. Exactly. Uh, in a concert performance. Um, I like how you use the word, um, uh, empathy and also sensitivity as being key to support. Um, you also now mentioned something I think very important for our viewers and especially for people from business is that uh, you have the entire score in front of you while the solo, the soloist or the violinist with whom you play together does not. Uh, I also know this as a violinist myself. I have my violin notes in front of me, but you're the one with the whole um, uh, music score. Uh, so can you tell us a bit more about that? That means that what importance that gives to the uh, pianist uh, at that moment. Yeah, well, uh, the importance uh, is that um, it gives you um, a feeling of safety and a, a feeling of control because you know exactly what the song is or the violins the singer is doing. You can see the music, you can see the text. So um, you have everything in front of you. The soloist, um, they have only their part, as you said. So it's good that the soloist takes time to learn your part as well. I mean, when I say learn, not to be able to play it, but at least to know what's going on in the piano. Yeah. For their companies, the good part is that, yes, I know the soloist part, but I also have it in front of me. So I'm safe. Yes. But uh, so that, uh, that's, that's the other thing that um, um, the feeling of safety, let's say, yes, that I know exactly what you are doing is in front of my eyes. Yes. But also it's good that the soloist somehow knows your part. You know, takes the time and read through the score, listen to you what you are doing. So that for a company it's a, it's a plus to have the the soloist part in front of them. <laughs> um, but it's also very important what you said that the soloist, the violinist or uh, singer, also needs to know your part so that even though he or she does not have the notes in front of them of what you are playing but that they, they know uh what you are playing so that if 
something goes wrong or somebody misses a bar or something unexpected happens, they can find their way back. I know this also is performing yeah. together with you and <laughs> other uh, pianists. Yeah, well, yeah, that's very important because, um, I mean, and if we think that the piece that two people or three people they are playing together, yes, is one piece, then, I mean, if you want to say that you know this piece well, it means that you know the whole piece, you know all the voices, you know all the instruments that they are involved in the creation of this piece. I mean, a composer is not composing first the violin part and let's say, oh, let's put some chords. This is never happening. I mean, um, um, a violin concerto, an aria, or a, a, a sonata for violin piano or cello and piano, the creation, it comes all together. The part of the violin and the part of the piano, they are being created at the same time. So it's one piece. So if you're a violinist and you are learning a Beethoven sonata, let's say, you have to know the piano part. I mean, because um, in that way you say, I know the piece. Because your melody in my part is one thing, is connected. I mean, the, the expression of a certain phrase is not only depending on, on how the melody on the violin is, but it's also depending on the harmony that the piano will bring in. It's important. Is it major? Is it minor? What's going on there? Are there some like dissonances or what's happening? So it's very important, uh, not only, I mean, for like, for the violinist to know the part because oh maybe something will happen i will need to find the pianist i mean this is never happening of course but i mean um but it's also important for the creation for the expression of the for the performance of the piece to know the piano part because there is, is the whole harmony there is the whole life the soul of the piece that comes together it's like you know when you know a person yes and you know only the face of the person. You don't know the person just by their face. If you don't know the character of the person, isn't it? True. So it's the same thing with music. If you want to say that I know this piece, it means that you know, you know the whole piece. You know your part, you know my part. At least you know what's happening there. You know that suddenly, boom, I have a chord coming in in a dissonant way. You're, you're expecting it. You are playing in, in your expression drives to that moment of the dissonance, let's say. Even if you have just one note, you have to hold one note. There's a whole turbulent, let's say, in the piano. So it's, it's, in, it's important also from this point of view, from, from the point of view of performance, of performing the piece, of making it come alive. <laughs> in our... Um recent uh, newly released Conduct Vision online course, How to Orchestrate Your Business, you are our music expert. And uh, at one point you said something very interesting in the part about string quartets is that if you could choose uh, which, which instrument to play in a string quartet, you'd be the second violin. And I thought this very interesting. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Um, well, Why I you chose the second violin? I think that has to be a bit uh, with the personality. <laughs> Um, you know, um, I'm an accompanist because um, I like to help, to support, um, to listen, to follow, <laughs> um, and in the same way to, to create something with somebody. Yes. Um, so um, the second violinist, many times it's been um, uh, compared to the accompanist because the second violinist is, is, is the one that helps with the harmony, helps to enrich the quartet, and it has actually a very important uh, role in the quartet. Imagine if um, in the quartet the second violin, violin is missing. There is a hole there. The, the, the harmonic feeling will be missing. The support to the first violin will be missing. Yes. Music is not only beautiful melodies or long vibrate notes or I don't know, high coloratura notes. It's what's coming under it. 
is what creates the atmosphere under. I mean, even um, Bernstein, he said about the second violins, they are very important because without them, we wouldn't have harmony. So the, the, there is this thing, it's the same with our companies. I mean, um, we are very, like how to say this, egoless people, <laughs> like we are not like, uh, our main um, interest is the music, to support the music, to create with the leader, let's say. Yeah. But also I believe um, the second violin, the quartet is equally important with the first violin. I mean, even the viola is important because um, there are many times, um, okay, what, what is a quartet? After Schumann, the quartet, there are like four people, equal important, four voices, equal important, that they work towards a common goal. Like uh, they have the same musical ideas and like at the end, they create this, let's say almost perfect, um, piece of art at the end, this piece of music. So it's not that the, the second violin or the accompanies, let's say in my case, it's um, um, somebody not important, yes? It's just, I believe that this comes from, like if we look back in the history, yes? The accompanies till, I think till the 60s of the 20th century, they were like very, um, um, like how to say this, undermined like uh, people because like uh, nobody less valued. Cared. Yeah, like nobody cared about them. It was somebody there in the back playing the piano for some very famous soprano or some very famous violinist. So no, nobody cared about them. I mean, it was the thing if you are there or not there. <laughs> you know, I mean, even if you look in the programs of like uh, like uh, the 19th century, yes, if you are not a list or like to play with somebody or to accompany somebody or some like great pianist, yes, they wouldn't even mention your name. Or it would be just like with small letters. Or we have cases that um, um, in a concert that when the famous violinist or the famous cellist was playing a sonata, was inviting over another famous pianist to play with him. But when he was supposed to play some, I don't know, waltzes or some light music with some like three chords in the piano, he was inviting his piano companies to play with him. But this it was before, yes? In the 20th century things changed, especially after the Second World War. I mean, the piano companies became more important. Now people didn't know about them. For that reason, we don't say anymore piano companies but piano collaborator. Yeah, I mean, even in the universities, especially in the States, there are programs that you can specialize as piano collaborator. And I think it's important because it's not easy to, to be a, a, a piano collaborator or a companist, it's not. You have to have many, many skills. First of all, you have to be a good pianist. Then um, you have to be able to interact. So you have to have social skills to communicate, to interact with other person. You have to have experience. You have to know about music. Yes, because I mean, every time you receive like music from the ninth century or music from the 20th century, well, you cannot play everything the same. Then you have to be able to adapt, to be flexible, depending with whom you're playing. How is it, for example, if you play with somebody new? Mm -hmm. You have a new partner, for example. So what is that initial dynamic? How does that look like? Well, I, I would tell you a story that happened recently, actually before the, the COVID. Um, somebody called me that um, they have a concert somewhere in a castle outside Prague and they need a pianist, their pianist was sick. And I said, okay, yeah, well, so we are playing. Oh, we play Smetan and Dvorak. I said, okay, I play this many times with many people. A Dvorak Sonatina uh, Smetana from my homeland, Domovin. Um, no, I said, okay, well, let's meet that day. We're going to have like an hour or two hours before the concert. We rehearse, we'll be fine. I said, yeah, okay, no problem. Of course, I was a bit nervous because I never played with this violinist before. I didn't even know him. I have never met him in my life, yes? I said, well, okay, we have two hours, it's enough. 
to get ready. I mean, you know, to get to know the other people, they are campy, they are, you know, um, they are the rubatos, the feeling of music and so on. Well, um, in the way they are big traffic. We arrive late. We arrive just like 10 minutes before the concert. Oh yes. <laughs> I say, oh my God, oh my God, I say that. <laughs> now, we go on the stage, yes? On the stage, one of those fancy digital pianos. Another boom for me, like, oh, I say, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> anyway, we start playing. I had to be really very alert in order to, you know, um, to get into his tempos, into the feeling of music. But you have to do it. You have no choice there. There you have to like uh, put in work all the functions you have inside you as a companies to be ready to do whatever it takes. And it worked fine. Nobody knew that we just met and we just played together. So it, it's very, I mean, um, and there, here is coming in the sensitivity that I spoke mm. before and the flexibility. That because, I mean, yes, I played Smetana hundreds of times before. Dvorak also, like the, the Sonatina. And each person, each performer plays differently. Yes. So you have to be ready to adjust your feelings, to adjust your ideas about the mu this music, to the ideas of the other person, even without rehearsal. Of course, when you have rehearsal, it's better because then you still say, I mean, the first thing that I would say to somebody when I have to rehearse with a person, what is your tempo? Because it's very important to know how fast or slow you want to play a certain piece. And then you have to be ready to just follow their breathing, <laughs> their rubatos, like slowing down or going faster or, you know, because we are all different. We all feel the music somehow differently. So you have to be ready. <laughs> and how does it then look at uh, performance itself? You told us now a story of um, uh, actually playing with somebody at that moment of, of a performance, but um, if you do have the time to prepare and rehearse. Um, during a performance, what is the key quality between you and your partner that keeps you together, that ensures success? Um, communication, I believe. Um, during performance, you have to communicate your ideas. Yes. At the beginning, um, when you play with somebody that you haven't played much before, it's a verbal communication. You have to stop and say, I think here we have to, let's say, slow down, for example. Yes. Or I think that this fourth is not enough, we need to do more, or something like this. Yes. You have to, and the other person can say, well, I don't think so. I think that this fourth needs to be less than fourth, and so on. Yes. So, and then um, you have to explain why and so on. Now, if you, uh, are work if you are working with somebody for years, yes, for example, I have a violinist that I've been working with him for 30 years now, plus, yes, we don't need so much the verbal communication anymore. There's like this feeling between us that we can communicate just with eyes, with like one look and we know what's going on, or with the feeling with one breath or something. So um, there are many ways, I mean, to to communicate with somebody, depending on how long you know the person, how long you have been working with the person, uh, you know his or her habits, and so on. So I believe communication. And then, of course, it's a mutual respect. Because imagine, you are working with somebody that thinks, or you're just a pianist, you're, you're not even a pianist, you're just an accompanist, yes? And looks at you like, oh, I don't respect you then there is a very bad collaboration. It cannot work like this. You have to respect the other person. How you are respecting your partner, your partner has to respect also you. And then to communicate what you want to do with that piece, for example. I think the music duo, as you now have beautifully described, is a great example of that, of a equal collaboration and understanding of the importance of roles and um, the equality. Yeah, yes. And that even though uh, one musician, in this case, the, let's say the soloist, mm -hmm. seems more prominent, mm -hmm. just because he or she is standing in front of you, that doesn't mean 
he or she is more important or carries the weight. I, I as, as a violinist who's standing in front, yeah. always say that, where would I be uh, without the uh, accompanist? When I get lost, I immediately, where do my eyes look? They look at the pianist because I ask you for help. Exactly. Because I know you will help me. Exactly, yeah. So, um, Rania, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for this talk. Thank you and for sharing a bit this world of the uh, piano accompanist. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and to our viewers, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've missed some of our previous uh, Conduct Vision talks, uh, go to our um, YouTube channel and um, you can find them all there and across social media. Goodbye for now. <laughs>